um, when we are graphing linear inequalities, you graph it just like you would graph a, um, a linear equation, except you are going to shade your um, graph, right? And um, you are going in the shaded region, all right? And we're going to talk about the shaded region. The shaded region represents all your possible solutions, okay? And so when you are, when you are do, um, identifying the shaded region, it's super important that, you, um, that it must be in slope-intercept form. Remember that y equals mx plus b, or y is greater than mx plus b, y is less than mx plus b. So let's have a quick um, uh, remember, remembering here. <laughs> um, if my y is less than or equal to, then that means we will have a solid line. All right? If it's greater than or equal to, it will also be a solid line. Okay? But if it's a less than or equal to, we will shade, do you guys remember? down. All right, guys, and I like it because it kind of, the D looks like the beginning of that less than sign. All right, if it's a solid line, if it's greater than or equal to, then you will shade up. And so, guys, think about if you can make a D or a P. If you can make a D, you shade down. If you can make a P, you shade up. Do y'all feel good about that? All right. And then, I think, uh, yeah, Eric, I think this is the only thing I did not teach y'all last, the level kids. So, um, uh, so here we go. So, if it's a less than, we don't have a solid line. We will have a dashed line. If it's a greater than, it will not be a solid line. It will be a dashed line. But, guys, if it's a less than, you still shade down, but you just shade down with a dashed line. If it's greater than, you still shade up, but you shade up with a dashed line. Does that make sense, guys? Does this, does this feel like you guys are remembering a little bit of what we're doing here? All right, so first of all, we want to identify our slope and our y-intercept here. So what is my slope going to be? Two. And what is the y-intercept going to be? Negative three. So I'm going to start by actually um, graphing that point there. So that's what negative three. And then I'm going to graph my slope is two, which is really like two over one. So I'm going to go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, yada, yada, yada. And guys, I am, and then you can also go down two, left one, down two left one. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my little points. And then guys, I'm going to take a look at my inequality sign. This inequality sign means, well, I have a solid line or a dashed line. That one means it will be solid. Okay. And am I going to shade above or up or down? Down. So I'm going to shade down. So I will now go ahead and actually graph my little solid line. This is why we all have our lovely rulers today. So I'm not going to make it a dashed line. I'm going to make it a solid line. And then I'm going to shade down. Now you can do this with your pen. I'm doing it with a lovely little highlighter, but we can shade down. And this shaded region represents all of the possible solutions. So anything in this area over here is a solution to the inequality. Do y'all feel comfortable with that? Okay. Also, anything on this line is also a solution because it's a solid line. If it was a dashed line, they would not be solutions. All right. So now the important thing, guys, is in, before you shade, you want to make sure it is in slope intercept form. So for this first one, for I don't know why it's number three. That should definitely be number one, but it's cool. All right, we're just jumping forward. So guys, for this first one here, it, can we graph this line exactly as it is? 
we need to get it in y equals. So how are we going to do that? We are going to add the 2x to both sides, which leaves us with 3y is greater than 2x plus 6. And guys, we then in order to solve for our y, we want to divide everything by 3. So my final equation is y is greater than 2 thirds x plus 2. Are y'all comfortable with that? So this is the line that we are actually graphing. So for this particular line, let's go in and identify what our line is actually going to look like. So this greater than, what does that mean? We will shade, or it's going to be a, a dashed line, isn't it? And we are going to shade up because that little greater than will make a lovely P up. All right, not down. All right, but what is my slope equal to here? My M is equal to 2 thirds and my B is equal to 2. So guys, I will shade. Oh, so now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to graph my 2 and then I'm going to go up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, all the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and go the opposite direction as well. Down 2, left 3, down 2, left 3. And now I'm going to graph my little line here. And the line, it is a dashed line. And I am going to shade above my line, correct? So I'm going to shade above the line because it is greater than or equal to. Does that make sense? So in this case, above the line is to the left. Sometimes above the line could be to the right. If my line was facing this way, above the line, would be to the right of the line. Does that make sense? So you got to think up or down. Up or down. Are y'all comfortable with that? Excellent. So now um, I would like you guys, let's go ahead and can we graph number four here? It should be number two, but can we graph number four just like this? No, got to change it. So we're going to subtract our x from both sides, which leaves us with negative 3y is greater than negative x minus 6. I divide by negative 3. But y'all, when I divide by negative 3, what is going to happen? What happens to my inequality sign? It. it flips it. All right, guys? So this is super, super important. You flip the inequality sign when you multiply or divide. When you multiply or divide by a negative, okay? So you flip that inequality sign whenever you multiply or divide. Now, speaking of the inequality sign, what kind of line are we going to have, dashed or solid? Solid. And are we going to shade up or down? Down. All right? So we are going to shade um, it's a solid line and we're going to shade down. My slope in this case was one third. My B or my Y intercept is two. So I'm going to start at two because that you always begin with your B and then you move with your M. So since it's one third, I go up one over three, up one over three, up one over three. Down one, left three, down one, left three, down one, left three. And it is a solid line. So I am going to go ahead and graph this here as a solid line. And then I am shading down. All right. Are you guys comfortable with this here? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, quick refresher. Um, guys, points that 
are on the dashed line are not solutions. All right, guys? If they are on a dashed line, they are not solution. But points on the solid line are solutions. So guys, if it's on a dashed line, not a solution. Solid line is a solution. Do you guys feel good about that? Awesome. All right, any questions for me? This, this should have been a review of what we've done in the past, all right? Except for, <laughs> except for one, all right? Does this ring in any bells, guys? It's not too bad, right? All right, so now let's do a quick little refresher here um, for number five. Um, for number five. Um, okay, when I'm looking at this line, guys, can I graph y is greater than three? I can. What kind of line is this going to be? A horizontal line. Okay, guys, because my slope is zero. Do you guys remember that lovely hoy, right? So, guys, this is a horizontal line, and it is a, because it has a zero slope, and then it's the y equals something, right? Or, in this case, y is greater than. So, guys, in this case, let's take a look at our line right here. Am I going to have a dashed or a solid line? dashed. And guys, am I going to shade up or down? Newsflash, up, because it's the greater than. All right, so it's up. So we are going to graph a horizontal line at y is equal to 3. So I'm actually not even going to use, oh, but it's supposed to be dashed. Yikes. All right. I kind of forgot there at the beginning. It's just a long dash. All right. But it is a dash, okay? Ah, sorry about that, y'all. It's supposed to be a dashed line. I guess I could do like, there we go. Haha. <laughs> now it looks dashed. Y'all feel good about that? All right. And we are going to shade up, which means we shade above. Are you guys comfortable with that? So that is going to be a dashed line, and that is going to be above. All right, can we graph this, number six, y'all? What does it look like, though? Ah, this will be a vertical line. Okay, remember all of our axis of symmetries were vertical line. So this one will be a vertical line. And that is because it has an undefined slope. And your x is equal to that x-intercept. So this is going to go right through at negative 4. All right? So if we take a look at this line, we look at our less than or equal to. We know it's going to be a solid line. And you should shade down. But y'all, can you really shade down from a vertical line? So, only for vertical lines, what does down really mean? Do you think we should shade, if it's less than, do you think it's going to be all these values on the right side or all the values on the left side? Left. So, guys, that is only for vertical lines. You do left and right. All right? So, in this case, we are going to shade to the left. Are y'all comfortable with that? That only works for vertical lines, okay? Because um, horizontal and slanted lines, you still think up and down. You only think left and right for your vertical lines. All right. So question for y'all. So that's just a quick graphing. So question for you guys on these down here. Which of the following points would be solutions to this inequality? Well, y'all, if we were looking for solutions to this inequality, um, what would our, uh, what, what's one thing you could do if you wanted to identify if it's a solution or not? Yeah? Um, I think you could, like, eliminate all the 
all the choices that are two or uh, below two. Okay, anything that's below a two, or that that is one thing that you could do. Like any also, though, um, guys, you could graph it right and check each point. Are you guys comfortable with that? Like you graph that line and then check each point. Like visually, you could actually just see. But how could we do it algebraically? How could we do it algebraically? You could plug this point in for x and that point in for y. This point in for x, that point. And you can check to see if it makes a true statement. So guys, if you wanted to check and see if something was a system algebraically, you plug in each point for x and y. So y'all, I'm going to do uh, this first one with you guys. And then I want you guys to do the rest kind of on your own. So I'm going to go here. We have an x and a y. So if I was going to rewrite this lovely equation, then I would say, okay, y, which is 0, is greater than 2 thirds times x plus 2. Are you guys comfortable with that? I know it's kind of tiny. I'll zoom in a little. All right, guys? So I just, put, I just used this equation, y is greater than 2 thirds x plus 2. But instead of y, I put in 0. Instead of x, I put in 1. So then we solve that so that 0 is greater than 2 thirds plus 2. So that's going to be what? That's what? Oh, gosh. What's 2 thirds plus 2? So that's 0 is greater than, what, 8 thirds is what it would be? Is that a true statement, y'all? Is 0 bigger than 8 thirds? That is a false statement. So that would be not a solution. Does that make sense, guys? Are y'all tracking with me? That's not a solution. So this one is not. We want to see which one is a solution. So we would do the same thing. So I'm going to kind of draw little lines between them so that I don't get too confused here. 8 is greater than 2 thirds times 4 plus 2. Okay, I'm going to draw a little line down the middle here. All right, so we have 8 is greater than 2 thirds times 4 is what, 8 thirds? 8 thirds plus 2, so that's like 6 thirds, so it's what, 14 thirds? Mm -hmm. 8 is greater than 14 thirds, that's 4.66. Is that a true statement? That is. 8 is bigger than 14 thirds, so that is a true statement. So this one is a solution. All right, guys? So this one is a solution. That one is not a solution because it's false. So this one is a winner. Ding, 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 ding. Does that make sense, guys? So you want to see, you can actually plug in an algebraically. Now, let's say you have a lovely handy-dandy calculator here. Well, guys, what you can do is you can sit here and you can say, okay, 2 thirds times 4 plus 2, that gives me 4.66667. 8 is greater than that, so it's a true statement. So you could also just do it in here. You could type in the right side of your equation. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to see which out of these other three is a true statement or not. All right, guys? There's only one more that is true. There's only one more that is true. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill out the little skeleton here for each of these. But then, guys, I want you to actually see what is, if it's a true statement or not. All right, so now we want to see, are these true statements or not? So you guys can plug it in. You can see if you want to do it with uh, your lovely fractions, you can do it with your lovely fractions. Otherwise, we want to see, is this a true statement? All right, guys, so what you can see is from these last three here, the only one that is a true solution were uh, this 4, 8, 
then the negative 8, 0 here. Because, guys, now number, um, this third one was tricky. We had negative 2 is greater than negative 2. This is false because it's just greater than. So, guys, this means it's actually on the line. Does that make sense, y'all? But it's on a dashed line. If we graphed this, this would have been on the dashed line, and it would have been false. Does that make sense, y'all? These would have landed solidly in the shaded region. These outside two would have been just in the uh, non-shaded region. This one would have been on the dashed line, but it's still false. All right, guys, are y'all comfortable with checking to see if these are solutions or not? Awesome.